and welcome to our podcast, Keeping It Together, um, or KIT, we like to call it. Um, this is a podcast where we are talking to different people and seeing what helped them through COVID to stay well and what they put in their kit. So today we are joined with Pam again. Um, we did the first interview, we did a field interview where we talked about beating and we talked about Pam and uh, we got to know her a little bit more, but now we're actually going to um, do it together and she's going to help us uh, learn how to beat and we'll see what we can come up with. So, yeah. 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 Take it away, so, Dr. Pam. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say before, yeah, before we start, yeah, we're uh, filming this at the uh, University of Calgary's uh, Medical School Indigenous Hub. Mm -hmm. Um you know, we're on Treaty 7 land, so, you know, I'm acknowledging the land. I oh, mean, I don't actually really know how to do an land acknowledgement. <laughs> no, I think about it. I was, I was like, you know what, I'm going to kick this one off, but maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we're on Treaty 7 land and stuff, uh, you know. <laughs> and, uh, like, so my family is, like, from around there. So. But normally I don't really do it, so that's my experience. My experience. <laughs> And I normally say that too, but yeah, but yeah, thanks for uh, letting us be on our land. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all of the school assemblies where there have been acknowledgments of the land, this is the best one so far. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm sure there's like, I don't know, maybe like the professional can do it next time. But, you know, anyways, that's out of the way, so we can talk about Talk about the beating. Yeah. Yes. Tell us about beating. <laughs> Me? Okay. So I feel a little bit of pressure because like I've never taught anyone. I've learned fairly recently, um, except my daughter. Um, so it's kind of different when I'm The best way to teaching. like learn something is to teach <laughs> it to somebody else, right? Yeah. Like, true. Yeah. True. So I started beading. It's funny, like my mom doesn't bead, my, my man doesn't bead, but they do other things like they like cook and like make jam and crochet and I'm terrible at all of those things. Um, but then during COVID I was like, oh, I need something to keep me more mindful so I was doing just like I was working a ton like just working 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 and sleeping a couple hours and I just thought I need something to keep my hands busy that's not my keyboard so what I tend to do is just like look up fun patterns like if I want a picture of a parrot or baby Yoda and then print it out and then do something like this where it's just um that your pattern sort of stapled onto felt and I use a stapler because like that's what I have and it's not fancy but it works um, just to keep it stable and then you can just do all your colors um, so that's that's what I do I tend to do them very slowly because they take time um, and just gives me things to do so I thought we would do um, a little flower together um, and also I started learning how to do like around things so the feather in our smudge kit here I needed that um, my dad has recently requested a hat band so I have a loom I bought a loom we'll see how that goes I don't know, but that's, that might take me a while. Um, and then I think I mentioned last time too, I then started thinking, well, I can make these things. What else can I do? So for Christmas, I made my parents both like mitts um, out of leather. And so beaded the tops of them and, and those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. It's just nice to have like productive things at the end. Then you yeah. be like, I made this and now someone else can have it. All of this stuff is like the component parts aren't that expensive, right? So like you can get thread, like nylon thread, like on Amazon or if you go down to Moonstone you can get it um, scissors you need and then you need wax so you'll see these little flowers this oh. is wax so after we thread our needles you have to wax your thread to keep your so your thread doesn't misbehave otherwise it'll fray um, so you just wax it um, so I'll show you how to do that so those are the little things that you need and then it's just the beads and I would say beads actually aren't that expensive you can go down like I usually go to Moonstone to get mine um, and you get like big like sort of hanks of them for usually around five dollars but the problem is then you're like you'll see i have many colors of purple because i'm like oh there's a new color of purple that i don't have so i better buy it so i think you can spend as much as you want yeah. on it mm -hmm. um, and then the other stuff like you get some leather for the backs right and then these little fixtures um like the pins or i have earring hooks and things mm -hmm. those are fairly inexpensive too Your pants are falling down. Ah, I know. I sure wish I had something to hold all of my pocket junk. Well, good news. Adam here from the Kit or Keeping It Together podcast 
I'm happy to announce some new swaggy backpacks from one of our sponsors, the Indigenous Primary Healthcare and Policy Research Network, or the IPHC PR. These thin backpacks are perfect for carrying light things like your call maker or your money holder or even your water bottle. They also come in black. Keep a lookout for our events and podcasts to see how you can get your hands on some. Um, and I think as you do more, you probably end up spending more because you're trying to figure out how to do different things. Mm -hmm. um, and then this little case that I have, I got a traveler's kit. Yeah, so it's a little, um, it's a little kit. So you can, if you're working on a specific project, you can like put your colors in there, and it's got your scissors. This is magnetic to hold your needles. Oh, it's got a little spot for your wax. But a Métis artist um, here in Calgary actually was making them, so I got one from them. And they've just recently moved to Edmonton. But um, then you have at the top has a little bit of of leather there, so that you can put your beads there. So you guys can put your beads on these little mats. So I don't run away, um, but then it's this really cool little kit that is also by like supporting indigenous artists, right? Uh -huh. Kit stuff. for your kit. Hey. Kit for your kit. <laughs> Look at that. So if everybody, if you take some thread, so there's little spools of thread all around you, and you basically want two arms lengths for each needle. So if you just grab the end and then just do that, and then again, one more arm's length. What if one arm is longer than the other is okay? You use whichever <laughs> arm. You can use both arms. It doesn't really matter. Your um, So the the needle that has the thread on it that we use to sew down, we'll, we'll have to re-thread that one sooner because that one's going to go faster, right? Uh, is it true that uh, old school leaders, uh, uh, they always have one finger that's nothing but callus? Do you know what? I don't... I'm not, it's not too bad for beading, I find, uh -huh. um, but when I was making those mitts, sewing leather was like a whole new skill set. Um, and there was bits where, like, any the needles for sewing, like, clever so needles, thick. right, that's what they're called, um, are so sharp. Like, I was honestly, I would be trying to do them, like, while on meetings and just, like, bleeding. And uh, so there's bits of the mitts that are, like, covered with your blood. that are tucked in the inside, <laughs> the parts that face inside. Um, and it was hard, but then, so actually, because I was really struggling, and I was like, well, maybe it'll be Christmas, like, 2023 by the time I have them done. Mm. So I tweeted about it, and actually um, an elder from up north wrote to me and gave me some tips on how to sew it and how to, like, place the needle and then pull the leather down, because you're going through three layers at one point, rather than trying to push it. Mm -hmm. um, and once I, had, I, I finished them, like, in a day, once I had that figured out. So I think it's that also that, like, figuring out that knowledge, right? That I don't know anyone in my family who beads and does this kind of stuff. So having to like connect to other people who do have that knowledge and were willing to share it with me. Is there any like online beading communities? You know, it's funny. I think, so <laughs> I found someone added me to one on social media, that, but I think it's just like random people, like Canadian beaders. But for most of, I, I've connected to a lot of indigenous beaders on um, Twitter and Instagram. So that's where I found people who, who do it, right? Yeah. I am struggling. <laughs> do you want some help? I think, it, yeah. So once yeah. you've got it on, what I can show you is a trick. Um, so Amy Willier, who owned Moonstone and sadly passed away uh, in 2021, um, was running these these tutorials, right? So when I started uh, beating, that's who I learned on. from. But her mom, Yvonne, who still owns Moonstone, um, taught her this trick, so she taught all of us this trick to to knot your thread. So I find this the easiest way. Otherwise, I'm like trying to knot threads. But you take your end and you take your needle and you just go like and you wrap it around a few times. And then I use my nail to just hold the needle and then you just slide the knot down. Oh, there you go. And then so you just wrap that how many times? Like three? Three or four. Three or four. Yeah, so you go. That's what my grandma taught me. Yeah. So that's what I do. Yeah. One, two, I didn't three. Teach my kids. <laughs> <laughs> you did not. <laughs> and then I pull it tight and then through. Yeah. And then you'll have to keep like a finger in the loop as you pull, because otherwise it might, the oh, thread might get. I just took it out. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll just start again. I can show you again if you want. Two, three, four, and then I just that's pull okay, it through. That's okay. That's efficient way. You say. No, I'm doing, what am I doing wrong? I'll show you. <laughs> so if you... Right. 
So you have your ends and you have the needle. Is it tied in Okay. Oh, because it knots it, right? So then you wrap. Oh, I was putting it around my needle. finger. Yeah, that's what I was doing wrong. Right? And then I just keep, I keep like these fingers in the loop so they don't get too I see, I see, I see. Yeah, oh. no, I screwed up. <laughs> Crease in my forehead as yeah. skin. <laughs> you could eat your chicken wings. Uh, oh, yeah. Your hot sauce. Oh, I got floss the grease out of my <laughs> Okay, we're ready. Did your granny used to cover your uh, all, all our furniture with like blankets everywhere, plastic? We always had blankets. We had my mom's big crocheter, so she's always crocheting, especially yeah. now it's with your COVID crocheting blankets uh. everywhere. Right. But it's better. I never had no one. I don't think in my family uses like plastic covers. I would uh-huh. see them on TV shows, right? People have those plastic couch covers. Like, what is that? <laughs> so strange that people <laughs> do that. It's, it's to like protect the like, furniture, but it just makes it look bad. Well, you know, you get judged either way. You know, you get plastic <laughs> on your couch, you but it looks stain. nice for forty years. Yeah. Or you go to yeah, your other friend's couch, and it, and it looks like they've been a bear's been scratching its back right yeah. there. You know, oh my god, there we go. <laughs> like, to me, like, seven tries. This is why you end up with the calluses, right? Because you're like, okay, and I'll just use my thumb, and once I poke my oh. thumb, I'm in the right place. So, next, we're gonna go back up right next to that center bead, and then we're gonna start using. Both. And that's like, we just do that over and over again, essentially. Um, not quite. Okay. I'll show you. Right. <laughs> so, come back up. And then you want I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. That's why I'm doing. When did we get to the part where we sell it? I've never even, yeah. Do you know what's interesting? When I started, um, so I started, I got that poppy. Like, this person was a poppy because that's the kits that they were selling. Um, and it was like in October. So I made that. Um, and I kind of had put them on social media. I was thinking, oh, look what I'm learning how to do. And people were like, oh, if you start selling them. And I was like, I don't want to sell them, though. That's not what it's for. Yeah. Right? But it I did make it. Ruins it. Makes it no like longer. That. Then, then it becomes a business, right? You don't and want it, it to be a project, not a hobby. Work. It's, yeah, yeah, it's something different, right? And so I did make a second poppy, the one that's fully beaded, um, for Grandmother Doreen when her husband passed away because he was in the forces. So I did some research on the history of beading, and beading's been around. Well, it's been around for so long that they don't actually know the exact time when people started using it, indigenous, indigenous people in North America. So they they say that it's about 8,000 years ago that it started, but back then they didn't use glass beads like yeah. this until um, Europeans came over. No, I'm pretty sure these are plastic, plastic. Yeah, but they plastic. certainly didn't use plastic they were, either. They, <laughs> were, <laughs> they were oh, glass originally, yeah. but before that they would use like shell, people would use shells yeah. and bones and seeds. Right? So, like, when we talk about seed beads, that's where the name comes from. These ones are so hard to make. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Have you tried it? <laughs> yes. Really? Cool. I think the trickiest part about beading in general is keeping your attention on your string. So, you want to keep it tense, but not like super tense so that it bubbles. Um, it's like my insights. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every meeting that you walk into. <laughs> down on the string. So, you're sewing down your first string. Okay. Sounds good. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna give it the old college try by you know. Is I'm that not a half ass try? No, it's like it's like the you know, I'm probably gonna mess this up. I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, okay. You know, kinda try. Oh. Finally I've done my first I've done my first little nod there. And, uh, no wonder it took you fifty hours to do your first the first one. And it was yeah. like and I had this little video tutorial from Amy. A flower like, like rewind, rewind, yeah. <laughs> go back. Yeah. Wow, it's intricate. Good thing I wore my glasses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm faster at them now. Like, I'll sometimes yeah. beat a flower, like, yeah. in a meeting. 
Never, never <laughs> IPF CPR meetings, never. But it's, I, I think what it, you know one thing, because there's a like research that says too that when you're thinking, um, if you're active, like you, you're like yeah, got all kinds of like like blood flow into your brain and yeah. those kinds of things, right? So I often yeah. think if I'm doing something and listening, I'll listen better. No, I 100% need right. that personally. Like I need to be doing something with my hands all of the times because like it just, it helps me think. Or not even with my hands, but just in general, right? Like it's like, for me personally, it's so good for me, you know? Like, my, all my best thoughts happen when I'm, like, moving, you know, yeah. like, like, pacing or something, right? Like, it's just the way my personal brain works, but yeah. I'm sure a lot of people, other people are out there like that, too. Kinetic learners, I guess you could say. Do you know what the great thing is, though? And I always say this, like, to my kids, that you can just start over. Right? It's like Lego. It's like if you build Lego and you break it, you can just rebuild it. You can just mm -hmm. rebuild it. Unless you drop the beads. <laughs> See if I can... You got some of yeah. them, I'm sure. Get more. Yeah. Do you remember the first time we met? I don't know if you remember this. Ah, uh, was it in uh, was it in rehab? <laughs> <laughs> the second time. Uh. No, it was at one of Michael Hart's things, and I didn't know you, and we were chatting, and we were both teaching research methods, uh. and like we were just chatting about um, how there's like other more varied things that we would probably also enjoy teaching mm. or just enjoy yeah. i i like the method step i do I, uh, um... all right i feel like with when you teach methods uh the standard is so low <laughs> And no one knows if you're right or wrong. Yeah, but people are like, this is so boring. As long as it's not, you can make it anything less than boring, like, it's all right. I think that was what our conversation centered on, was like how to not make it so boring that students are just wanting to throw up in class. You know, I, I feel like, you know, it's like, it's like, um, like law, you know, or what's another, what's another example of this? It's like, I feel like there's all these levers of change in society, uh, but they make them so inaccessible and boring uh, that only like an elite group of folks who get paid a lot and incentivize a lot get to do it. Uh, but the logic of it ain't that hard, right? But you gotta, it's like uh, you give me a, a contract and I'm like, ah, forget it, I just sign it. I don't wanna read it, yeah. you know? Uh, and, but I wish I knew how to read it. You know? I know like, how to read it. Okay, I know how to read it, just don't like to read. Yeah, that's how they do it. You want to make a change in the world, have institutional power, you got to be a nerd. Yeah. All right. I think it's just a testament to like how many mistakes I make, where I'm like, oh yeah, I can not figure out how to fix that. Yeah, I tried to fix it. I don't know. It just it doesn't really seem to be working. I'm sure the like the mistakes are like a huge part of it. Like I, oh. I'm like I've never done this before, right? So I don't even know like what kind of mistakes I'm. You know, able to make it right yet. So like, Let's find out. but it's okay. Like it's okay. Like I don't mind being bad at something. It's okay to like be new to things. But that's you know? how we learn, right? Like that's why I always tell my kids too. It's yeah. like if we were all good at everything, we would never learn. Yeah. Anything. That's why I'm always telling my kids they're not good at anything. <laughs> yeah, you learn. You know. Well, we got a good start. You got a good I start. Got a middle. I got a middle too. Want to keep a little thread, oh, Adam? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. This is mine. Not too shabby, considering I was struggling at the beginning. So I'm pretty proud of myself for that. I did three beads, and then I, you know, it all just kind of went south from there, and I started going backwards. You and uh, I that. lost track. I lost track of my needles, and uh, yeah, I messed up. But it's so. that idea of mastery, right? Like, cause, well, then once you sort of get the hang of it, and you get going, and um, oh. it's just it's quite rewarding. You said yeah, this takes like, yeah. it's like five hours to do like one of these, right? You said? Um, for one of these guys? Yeah. yeah it takes a few hours. Yeah. yeah. I mean like mastery, it's like, I think it's like you have to spend like a thousand hours doing something to obtain. Like, I mean mastery. the first one took me like 50. Yeah. Right. And you then, get faster. You get faster. You get faster yeah. And then you can start doing different things, right? So you had said, um, you, it's easy to go wild with it. Uh, but uh, if you just were looking for like a basic setup, do you think you could get yourself uh, a decent uh, like beating uh, startup kit for what twenty five bucks? Um, probably if you didn't have like a ton of colors. I think the beads are the most expensive part, right? So you just need some nylon thread. You need some little needles. 
Um, if you have some beeswax, you could use like a candle, even probably just something to wax mm -hmm. the threads. Um, I got a couple of candles, yeah. but they're scented like uh, um, ox musk. Why? There you go. It's Why? <laughs> Um, yeah, and then the just getting <laughs> <laughs> just getting bees. And one thing um, at Moonstone, they do have like a box of like scrap leather. So if you were making something and you just needed a little piece of leather, and you didn't have any for the back. Um, when you go, that's where if I go down and buy some bees, and I know I just need a little piece, so you can pull something out of the scrap box. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I guess we're gonna be signing off now. So thank you again, Pam, for coming, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, and if you guys do any meeting, we'd love to see pictures, or if you have any um, activities that you did during COVID that kept you well, we would love to hear from you. So please let us know, or if you want to be a, on the podcast or anything, we'd love to hear from you. So um, yeah, thanks everyone, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.